People warned us not to go to Cairo, but we did anyways, and yes, we found destruction and decay. But we also found hope. Hope from the people desperately trying to preserve their town and its history. This is the former Cotter Field, where the St. Louis Cardinals used to have spring training. Across the street is the site of a Civil War contraband camp, recently recognized by the National Park Service as part of the Underground Railroad Network to Freedom. This is the Cairo Custom House Museum, now down to one volunteer docent fighting to keep the museum going. This is the 1884 library, still active and only on its seventh librarian ever. This is the First Presbyterian Church, which no longer has an active congregation, but now has its own nonprofit to raise funds to try to save the building. This is the War Chapel AME Church, which earlier this year received a large planning grant from the National Trust African American Cultural Heritage Action Fund. And this is the site of the former town pool, which closed overnight rather than integrate in the 60s. If you've never heard of Cairo, you might be wondering why it's so desolate, and it's a hard question to answer. In part, it's because of racial tensions that led to white business owners closing their stores instead of hiring black employees. In part, it's because of a decline in river trades and the steamboat industry that once made Cairo a thriving town. In part, it's because of flooding from its position on the confluence of the Mississippi and Ohio rivers. And in part, it's apathy and neglect from government agencies who could have provided support. Our guide and Cairo hometown native Tara told us her work to preserve her hometown is guided by her faith. She believes that maybe Cairo has to go through these hardships, that the slate could be wiped clean, and the city can be reborn. There's still a lot of work to be done to save Cairo, but the first step is finding people who care enough to do the work. We ended our visit to Cairo at Fort Defiance State Park, where the Mississippi and Ohio rivers meet. There, we stood in the confluence of the two rivers in a town that's reckoning with its own confluence of its past and future.